Spitting great gouts of fire, he was like a bleeding volcano. Ever seen a volcano? What? You think I'm having you on? Clive! Your friend! She's awake! Right. <sighs> Go to her, you fool. <laughs> right, you lot. Enough slacking. Jutes, come with me. Gav, go and get those wounds seen to. Oh, oh, give it to me straight. How long have I got? So? All in good time. Let's make ourselves scarce. Jill. Clive is hesitant to go and see Jill, and I don't think that's because he doesn't want to see her. I think he does. He's just nervous about it. He's been so emotionally distant for so long that seeing her again could be complicated. It's true then. It really is you. It is. Clive! You're alive. So are you. I still can't believe it. Are your wounds healed? Yes. Taya told me what happened. You saved my life. After nearly taking it, I had no idea. Forgive me, but how did you ever come to be there, Jill? Fighting for them. The Iron Blood. They invaded not long after the news arrived. About Fink's Gate. Rosaria had lost her leaders. The Duchy was in chaos. The Iron Kingdom saw our weakness and pounced upon it. They killed the men and captured the women. And took you back to Iron Home. I thought they meant to have their fun with me before the end. But the end never came. My powers awoke and everything changed. It all happened so fast. We were told that the Iron Blood had captured a dominant and planned to bring her on their latest crusade. Mm. They gave me a choice. To fight for them on the battlefield or... see my countrywomen slaughtered. And they call us dominants. What? What happened, Clive? What happened at Phoenix Gate? It was me. I killed Joshua. No, that's not true. I know you, you wouldn't do that. It's the truth. I changed into him again, not long ago. The second icon of fire. The one responsible. <laughs> Clive. When I think back to that night, The hooded man, he, he spoke to me. What did he say? Sources. We have 
found you. What did he mean? Clive, we should go back there, to Phoenix Gate. I need to know what really happened, and so do you. You need to know for certain. And if what you told me is true, and you did what you said you did, then we will face it together. Jill, I... All right. You'll be needing a change of clothes, then. Out you go, your lordship. We wouldn't want you getting overexcited. Uh, sorry. I'll see you soon then, Clive. I should be ready too. We've a long journey ahead of us. I'll come down as soon as I've got changed, Clive. So we see these two reunited. Now, the only thing we had really seen between them were the scenes that occurred during the flashback early on in the game. So, it appears as though I was right about Jill being a kind of political hostage taken after the end of a war, sort of like Theon Greyjoy from A Song of Ice and Fire. Now, she was raised in Rosaria, similar to how Theon was by the Northern Kingdom in the Game of Thrones, and she was sort of, in a sense, kind of brought up as one of the ch their children, along with Clive and Joshua. She seems to have had, um, felt a strong connection with them, even though they were sort of her hostage keepers, and I guess the two of them thought of her kind of as a sister, although there did appear to be some deeper feelings between Clive and Jill there. Clive, at the very least, was a little bit more hesitant to express them. So you could see at the point where um, when Clive was going to leave on his first mission, Jill was afraid that he was going to get hurt or get killed. So she hopped off the railing and, and started to pray for him. And you could see that she was crying over it. And then he went to try to, uh, thought about comforting her for a moment. And then, like, was reluctant to and, and sort of stepped back. And I guess that was the next day anyway. It was probably the last time that he had seen her until he encountered her at the beginning of the game. So it, I don't know, he, he was a, she's obviously the love interest of this game. But given how he was reluctant to express any of that affection for her before, he's probably going to continue to be that way now. You know? Even though there are side missions and stuff to do, I'm not going to be filling these episodes out with a lot of side missions. If I feel like they're important things to show and like demonstrate and all that kind of stuff, I'll put them into these episodes. But I'm not going to show you side missions where I'm distributing food to people in the hideouts. It's, it's boring. A lot of the side missions in this game really do feel like filler. They were definitely performed with like lower kind of production values. It's probably done by sort of like a, uh, you would call it like second unit if it were a film, but sort of like a, a, a group or part of the development team that were not performing like the main um, cinematics and all that kind of stuff. The animations are much simpler and more stilted, and this isn't really good facial animations. He pulls food out of his pocket and <laughs> hands it to him like that. It's supposed to be a plate. It's a little goofy. And a lot of the side missions are really just time wasters. Some of them seem to be all right, but I'm probably not going to be putting too many of them in here, so that's why I'm talking over this. I'm also going to end the episode before we finish all of these side missions. So I'm probably going to record all of it, but I may not edit them into the episode. And, I don't know, I, I think we ought to get moving on this. So I'll end the episode so we can get started on the next one immediately.